In this video, we are going to talk about common communication barriers. Aside from the environmental noise perceived through our auditory system that we refer to as ingay in Filipino, there are other forms of which interferences manifest. And as we progress, I want you to do some self-check and analyze which of these you are personally experiencing and would like to work on. First, let's talk about barriers that involve words. The first type under this group is semantic noise. One of the common reasons why we misunderstand each other is when we become too technical in language use. If we have an area of expertise and we use its excessively technical vocabulary, all those jargons can cause a real barrier. We have to remember to speak in everyday language to connect with people in a more natural way. Aside from special jargon and unique word usage, phrases from foreign languages, mispronunciation, and euphemism could also result to semantic noise. Another barrier involving words is disorganized messages. If you are talking in a stream of consciousness and end up being incoherent, it is going to be very hard for people to follow. So instead, give an orderly presentation of ideas and always apply conciseness. The third type under the first category of barriers is information overload. If someone is talking to you for an extended period and it just gets overwhelming, it's very hard to keep track of every bit of information. You don't want to be this person on your end of the conversation. Take lots of short talking turns and bounce the conversation back and forth with occasional checking in. That way, there would be much more opportunity to clarify if anything needs to be clarified. So those are some of the ways that we experience barriers in relation to words. Let us now turn to another category, physical barriers. And the first and most obvious one under this is physical distance that has become more prevalent at academic and professional settings. Distance can become a barrier because we are losing a lot of the nonverbal cues. We could end up missing the humors that others might be using or the warmth that could come across face-to-face -face conversations. Another physical barrier involves auditory problems. Sometimes our ears don't work so well. For example, you might have an inborn hearing impairment or you just came from a long flight that resulted to sore eardrums. With the advent of online distance education, technical barriers has fully evolved into a varied and commonly encountered category of interferences. While using technology, there are barriers that make the process of communication complex. When audio quality is poor or video signals are weak, the message may not clearly reach the target group. Photos, graphics, live streaming, webinars, podcasts, PDFs, and other audio and visual formats are now very important parts of how people and organizations communicate. But each of these content formats can prevent some people from accessing information. Erratic power supply and device-related glitches are also under this type of barrier. Let us now proceed to the last category of barriers that we'll be exploring in this video, psychological barriers. I personally consider this as least regarded by many, but the one that we should focus on the most. Psychological barriers are due to the emotional character and mental limitations of human beings. These barriers result into absent-mindedness, the fear of expressing one's ideas to others, over-excitement, and emotional instability, all accounting to an overwhelming number of communication problems. Now here are some common forms of psychological barriers. Number one, false assumptions. Communication failure may occur if the sender fails to communicate instructions well because one assumes that the receiver has understood the message. But the fact could be that the receiver only partially understood what was communicated or did not understand at all. Both situations can cause communication breakdown. Number two, attitudes and values. An attitude is a pre-learned disposition that can be linked closely to a person's beliefs and value system. Whether your attitude is positive or negative, it can influence the communication process. 
Say, when your religious or political views are being threatened, you are likely to react emotionally instead of listening attentively to the message. Number three, negative self-image. If someone lacks self-confidence or has a poor self-image, he or she might entertain fearful thoughts. For example, judging oneself as not intelligent enough to understand the message. Number four, inferences. We may have good reason to expect that our inferences would be correct, but they may prove incorrect due to some unpredictable situations. As inferences go beyond the facts in making certain statements, they can give wrong signals. We interpret symbols on the basis of assumptions, which usually prove correct, but there is a probability that they may sometimes be wrong. This type of inference is also termed premature evaluation, where the receiver has the tendency to judge rashly without understanding the frame of reference. To guard against this communication barrier, senders should always use specific language and receivers should clarify meaning by asking questions. Number five, close-mindedness and overconfidence. People are sometimes not prepared to receive new information on a subject about which they assume to know everything. Thus, their mind is closed to new ideas, facts, and suggestions. Such people run the risk of showing overconfidence. For example, an employee approaches his closed-minded boss with some suggestions to improve something. But the boss says, I am an expert in this field, or I have been doing this job since 19-whatever. Thus, he completely rejects the information from the employee even before knowing the facts. Close-mindedness may cause a person to be unwilling to learn new ideas. It is best to approach communication with humility and a willingness to learn, for it is impossible to know everything about any particular field. Number six, apathy. An apathetic communicator creates a barrier due to a lack of emotion or interest in what is being sent or received. Apathy causes communication to break down because it interrupts effective listening. Number seven, emotions. An emotional communicator is unable to organize messages properly. For example, a nervous presenter keeps on repeating the same words and expresses his blurred thoughts with gesticulations. An angry person does not understand that the message he wants to convey is ruled by uncontrolled emotions and he is misdirected as the emotion makes him turn a blind eye to reason. Anyone who comes across such an irritated person becomes a victim of his unfocused negative emotions. The perplexed, nervous, and excited state of mind never allows a smooth flow of communication. Just a recap, there are several categories of barriers to communication, like barriers in relation to words, physical barriers, technical barriers, and psychological barriers. And that concludes this lesson. Thank you so much for watching this video. For updates and new lessons, please subscribe and hit the bell button.